Hello. Welcome to our course, Environmental Sustainability and Resilience. I know that's a mouthful, and you may be wondering about what that title means. So, to set the stage for what you'll be studying for the next six weeks in this course, I think it is appropriate to look at a few key terms and their definitions. Let's take the terms in this course title and look at them a little more closely. First, what do we mean by the term environment? The most def basic definition of environment is the surroundings or conditions in which a person, animal, or plant lives or operates. As you might notice, this is a fairly broad definition. The room in which you are sitting is the environment in which you are studying right now. It has a few characteristics worth noticing. It has a temperature and it has a certain amount of lighting, the quality of which can be described. It has volume the amount of space present, and then there are the details of furnishings that you could describe. Further, it has a certain amount of and quality of noise. Maybe you're listening to the music in the background, or there is a fan on, or it's completely silent. There may be smells derived from a bowl of popcorn sitting next to you. There are also social components present in your local environment. The people in the room with you, if there are any, or in the building, or on the lawn outside. All those are components of your very local environment. You can also begin to draw increasingly larger, larger circles out from yourself and identify even more elements that shape the world in which you live and what you depend on to live and work. Thinking in this way, we get to another definition of environment that understands the term environment to mean the natural world as a whole or in a particular geographical area especially as affected by human activity. So the environment is the world in which we live and it includes all the physical and biological characteristics in the world in which, which are all connected together interdependently. These parts of the world in which we live influence us and are at the same time influenced by our behavior. As you can see, the environment is really a network of relationships in which everything is connected to everything else. Now let's look more closely at what the term sustainability means. Make note that when modified by the term environment, sustainability refers to a seemingly simple principle. Everything that we need for our survival and well-being depends, either directly or indirectly, on our natural environment. Sustainability creates and maintains the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony that permit fulfilling the social, economic, and other requirements of present and future generations. Sustainability is important to making sure that we have and will continue to have the water, materials, and resources to protect human health in our environment. What this suggests is that humans depend on the environment existing in a relatively steady state, the state in which it exists now, to support the way we use it. With our current large human population, we have come to depend on what we call ecosystem services very heavily to support our standard of living. Because we depend so heavily on the resources that the environment provides, we need for many aspects of the environment, rainfall, temperature, and seasonality, for instance, to stay the same, to stay much the same as they are now. Those particular features are important to agriculture, and thus the human food supply, in addition to being important to other non-human beings who rely on the environment for their livelihood. However, we know that things happen that put stress on certain aspects of the ecosystem. If something happens to shift weather patterns in a way that reduces rainfall, then certain plants find it difficult to grow and reproduce. The animals that depend on those plants for food and shelter then find it difficult to survive. This creates other complications. For instance, when grazing animals graze the dry and stunted grasses off a hillside, they reduce the ability that plants have to slow runoff when the rains do come. This leads to erosion of topsoil on those hillsides. Besides reducing the capacity of those hillsides to support grass, the sediment washes into streams and rivers, negatively affecting these aquatic ecosystems to support the wealth of life in them, and sometimes leads to floods that wash away riverbanks. It also washes downstream into lakes, reducing their ability to store water or into harbors, requiring them to be dredged in order to support shipping. There are many connections in the system. 
Our desire for sustaining ecosystems in a healthy state leads to a desire for increasing the resilience of these ecosystems. In general terms, resilience is the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape. That's called elasticity, or the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, which is toughness. However, sometimes that doesn't happen, and the state of the environment shifts into a new state often less complex and less capable of sustaining the complex web of life dependent upon it. Particularly when humans begin doing things that put more stress on an ecosystem, we would like for it to bounce back to a healthy state, quickly, whenever we stop doing the things that stress it. However, sometimes that doesn't happen. The state of the environment shifts into a new state, often less complex and less capable of sustaining the complex web of life dependent upon it. All this leads us to what we will be studying in this course. We will use the fundamental concepts of, of sustainability and resilience to evaluate the ways that humans have altered and are altering the environment in historical and contemporary contexts. In particular, we will seek to develop a view of mutually beneficial human-environmental interaction and explore human practices in search of wisdom that can lead us to behave in ways that contribute to sustainable and resilient environments rather than fragile and degraded environments. In doing so, we will explore what it means to be a responsible Christian, a responsible Christian steward in the world, human and non-human in which we live and work. Within the perspective of Christian stewardship, I operate under the following assumptions. First, the world and all that is in it and the processes by which it functions was created by God, and he values his creation. Second, humans are created in the image of God, and we are creative beings. Third, our ability to create is built upon our capacity to envision or imagine the world differently from what it is currently, and our capacity to behave, and our capacity to behave intentionally in ways that reshape the world into what we envision. We have the power to choose to act in ways that shape the world from what it is into what it will become. All this makes us morally and ethically responsible to think and live in the world that values and promotes the well-being of its inhabitants. So let's dig in. I'm looking forward to this intellectual journey with you over the course of the next few weeks.